Marduk, a king, a god, a hero, and a legend. His story is one that stands out amongst the deep and rich mythology of Mesopotamia. Primarily worshipped in the city of Babylon, his tale is intertwined with that of creation, destruction, and the balance of the universe. While many of the details overlap with other Sumerian and Mesopotamian myths, Marduk's story takes place in another set of myths entirely. Our journey into Marduk's life is a voyage back to when gods walked amongst men, shaping destinies with their will. Let us explore the life of a god whose influence spanned across the heavens and the earth, and whose might and wisdom forged the essence of Babylonian myth. This is the story of Marduk, the king of the gods. In the time when the earth was young, and the cosmos a vast uncharted expanse, Marduk was born to Enki and Damkina. Enki was also known as Ea in this story, and Damkina was commonly associated with Ninhursag. Enki was not just any deity though, he was the god of wisdom, the keeper of deep secrets, ruling over the waters that brought life to all. Damkina was the goddess of fertility, and epitomized the fertile earth's bounty her very essence nurturing life in its myriad forms. Enki and Damkina resided in the primordial waters of Apsu, below the earth, a place of profound magic and knowledge. Together they gave birth to Marduk, the destined god of Babylon. His birth was no ordinary event. It was a herald of a new age, a beacon that signaled change amongst the gods. From the moment of his emergence from the Apsu, the primeval waters, it was clear that Marduk was destined for a path of greatness unlike any god before him. His very essence was a blend of the profound wisdom and the life-giving force of the earth, making him a god of unparalleled potential. Marduk spent his early days within the waters of Apsu, which was a realm of endless mysteries and boundless wisdom. And it was here, amidst the ancient spells and the murmuring of sacred waters, that Marduk's unique abilities began to surface. Under the watchful eyes of Enki, Marduk was initiated into the secrets of the cosmos, learning to harness the powers that bound the world together. His intellect and strength grew with each passing day, nurtured by the wisdom of his father and the loving care of his mother. As Marduk grew, so too did his understanding of his destiny. He was to be a bridge between the deep, mysterious waters of the Apsu and the rich, fertile lands of the earth. His lineage was filled with wisdom and fertility, depth and life, all woven together to form a deity whose powers transcended the boundaries of the known world. He was a child of both the abyss and the earth, a god whose reign would usher in an era of prosperity and wisdom for the land of Babylon. His upbringing in the Apsu was marked by lessons that transcended ordinary learning. Enki taught him not just about the world as it was, but about the possibilities that lay beyond the horizon. Marduk learned the language of the waters, the songs that could calm storms, and the incantations to summon rain. But it wasn't just his father's wisdom that shaped him. Damkina taught him about the earth's strength and nurturing qualities, which played a crucial role in grounding Marduk, bestowing upon him a deep connection with all forms of life. Together, Enki and Damkina taught Marduk the value of balance and harmony, the essence of true wisdom that would one day make him the greatest among the gods. As Marduk stepped into his role among the pantheon of gods, his unique attributes began to shine. He was not a god confined to one aspect of existence. His dominion stretched across the heavens and the earth. He would later go on to become the king of gods, ruler of Babylon and be given 50 names, each echoing a different facet of his power. But more on that later. Marduk was a figure of strength and determination, and he harnessed the winds, commanded storms, and brought life-giving rains to the earth, showcasing his control over the natural world. Yet Marduk's influence extended beyond the forces of nature. He was the god of justice, a role he took with solemn seriousness. He was known as the god of compassion, healing, regeneration, magic, and storms. In the bustling city of Babylon, his name was invoked for protection, wisdom, and guidance. Marduk watched over his city like a guardian, ensuring peace and prosperity. 
His laws were the foundations of civilization, and his judgments were final and fair. As the king of gods, Marduk's responsibilities were vast. He was the protector of the city of Babylon, its people, and its builders. Artisans and craftsmen sought his blessing, for he was a patron of the arts and a master builder himself. The temples and ziggurats that reached towards the heavens were a testament to his influence and inspiration. Marduk's power was not just in his might, but in his will to shape destiny. He stood at the helm of creation, guiding the cosmos with a steady hand. His decisions affected not only the gods, but every creature on earth. With wisdom gathered from the depths of Apsu and the nurturing spirit of the earth, Marduk navigated his responsibilities with a grace that solidified his place as the king of the pantheon, a deity whose legacy would endure as long as the rivers flowed and the stars shone above Babylon. Marduk's personal life was filled with a richness that mirrored the fertility of the land he protected. Sarpanit, a goddess of pregnancy, whose essence was as vital to the earth as Marduk's was to the heavens, stood by his side. She was not just his partner, but his queen, embodying the unity between the celestial and the terrestrial. Their love was celebrated annually, a festivity that drew mortals and immortals alike, symbolizing the sacred bond between God and mortal, heaven and earth. As Marduk and Sarpanit's union deepened, they gave birth to a child named Nabu, Nabu, just like Marduk, was a deity who inherited the vast wisdom of his fathers and the nurturing grace of his mother. Nabu, the god of wisdom and writing, became the scribe of the heavens, recording the destiny of gods and men alike. Nabu invented the very art of writing, contributing to the existence of the cuneiform tablets. His temples dotted the Mesopotamian landscape, standing as beacons of knowledge and learning. Marduk's pride in Nabu was evident, as the god often shared his most profound secrets and plans with his son, preparing him to one day play a crucial role in the administration of divine and mortal affairs. Marduk's romantic and familial relationships, however, were as complex as the pantheon itself. His interactions with other deities were layered with alliances, rivalries, and the occasional conflict, mirroring the dynamic and sometimes volatile nature of the gods. With Anu, the sky god, he shared a vision of order. With Enlil, the god of the air and storms, a mutual respect for the forces that shaped the world. These alliances were not mere conveniences, but deep bonds forged through shared trials and triumphs, each deity contributing to the stability of the world. Despite his wisdom and diplomatic efforts, Marduk was not immune to rivalries. His rise to supremacy had unsettled some, leading to conflicts that tested his leadership. The saga with Tiamat, though primarily a battle against chaos, was also a reflection of the opposition he faced from within the ranks of the gods, some of whom sided with the chaos dragon in the hopes of curbing Marduk's growing power. These relationships were a reflection of Marduk's ability to navigate the intricate politics amongst the gods, showcasing his diplomatic prowess and his capacity to forge unity among the gods, securing his leadership and the welfare of his beloved Babylon. Now that you have an understanding of who Marduk was, let us go deeper into the myths and legends that shaped Marduk into the king of the gods. The Enuma Elish The Enuma Elish is an epic of creation and stands as a testament to Marduk's might and wisdom. In the beginning, there was only primordial water mingling within the chaos. Apsu, the personification of fresh water, and Tiamat, the goddess of salt water, existed in a vast, formless mass. From their union emerged the first generation of gods, who later came to be known as the Anunnaki. As these gods grew, they became increasingly annoying. They were extremely loud and distracted Apsu during the day and kept him up during the night. Because of this, Apsu planned to destroy them to regain peace. However, Tiamat, upon hearing this plan, warns her eldest son, Enki, and he puts Apsu to sleep with his magic. Deciding to take action, Enki killed his father Apsu, establishing his dominion over the universe. From Apsu's remains, Enki created his home. Tiamat, 
once the supporter of the younger gods, now became enraged that they had killed Apsu. She dwelled on this feeling for a while until she decided to consult with another one of her sons, Kingu, who then advised her to start a war with the younger gods. Tiamat then took Kingu as her new consort and rewarded him with the Tablets of Destiny, which legitimized his rule as a god and allowed him to control destiny and fate itself. Kingu proudly wore the tablets on his breastplate during this war. With Kingu as her champion, Tiamat summoned the forces of chaos and created 11 horrible monsters to destroy the younger gods. Enki, Enlil, and many other gods engaged in battle against Tiamat and her forces, but their efforts were futile. It was then that Marduk, Enki's son, known for his extraordinary strength and powers, volunteered to face Tiamat with the condition that he be proclaimed the supreme god if he succeeded. Side note, in different versions, Anu or Enlil took the place of Marduk. Enki, the wise god, knew the rest of the pantheon would not simply agree to such a demand. So he came up with a plan. Enki gathered the gods for a banquet filled with food, entertainment, and wine. Lots of wine. As the party progressed and the gods fell into a deeper state of bliss, Enki made his move. He told the gods about Marduk's plan to fight Tiamat under the condition that he be made king upon his victory. The gods happily agreed, arming Marduk with potent weapons, armors, and spells. The next day, Marduk approached the battlefield, armed with his bow, club, and net, and challenged Tiamat to battle, employing strategy, magic, and raw power. Tiamat was not phased by the presence of Marduk and happily welcomed the challenge. Marduk, with eyes ablaze with the fire of potential, the wind at his command, and lightning in his fists, he approached the raging Tiamat, the horizon itself trembling at their impending clash. The battle commenced with Tiamat unleashing her monstrous army, a terrifying spectacle of chaos incarnate. The sky darkened with her wrath, the sea churned with her fury, and the earth shook beneath her roar. Marduk, undaunted, called forth the winds, his voice thundering across the battlefield, his presence alone dispelling the shadows of fear. The battle went on for days, the monstrous army falling one by one under the might of Marduk. Eventually, Marduk came face to face with Kingu. As the two clashed, they appeared to be evenly matched. However, the Tablet of Destiny Kingu possessed proved to be a problem. Realizing that he needed to claim the Tablet of Destiny for himself, Marduk lured Kingu into a trap. Seizing the moment, Marduk struck down Kingu, severing his breastplate from the tablet. With his newfound artifact, Marduk made his way to Tiamat for the final confrontation. While Tiamat was distracted, Marduk ensnared Tiamat in his massive net. Trapped, Tiamat turned to face Marduk, ready to destroy him with her deadly scream. But Marduk was too fast. Before Tiamat could make a sound, Marduk shot an arrow down her throat, killing her. The heavens themselves paused as Marduk then sliced her body in half. From the remnants of the fallen goddess, Marduk crafted the world anew. From the two halves of her body, he fashioned the heavens and the earth. The waters of Tiamat, once instruments of destruction, now gave life, flowing freely to nourish the world. Marduk and Enki then turned their attention to Kingu. Since he was the one who convinced Tiamat to start the war, Kingu was charged as guilty and killed on the spot. As his blood flowed from his body, Enki used it to create Lulu, the first man. Lulu became the helper to the gods, a servant in their eternal task of maintaining order and balance. Thus ended the battle between Marduk and Tiamat, a conflict that birthed the world as we know it, founded on the pillars of order, justice, and wisdom. Marduk's victory was not merely a triumph over chaos, but a testament to the enduring power of unity, foresight, and courage. The gods, in their wisdom, hailed Marduk as their king, the supreme ruler of the cosmos, under whose watchful gaze the universe would thrive in harmonious balance. The Enuma Elish concludes with a lengthy hymn praising Marduk, listing his 50 names, each representing different aspects of the universe and society he controls. This epic not only served as a cosmological and theological text, but also played a central role in the Akitu festival, celebrating the new year 
and reaffirming the king's divine mandate to rule. The Ludlul Bel Nemeki Within the ancient verses of The Poem of the Righteous Sufferer, a different facet of Marduk's divine nature is revealed. This narrative dives deep into the personal human experience, portraying Marduk not just as a god of cosmic battles, but as a deity intimately involved in the lives of his worshippers. The poem recounts the harrowing journey of a man named Shubshi Meshre Shakan, a devout follower of Marduk, who finds himself engulfed in suffering and misfortune, despite his unwavering devotion. His ailments are many, and his spirit is crushed under the weight of his suffering. Sickness ravaged his body, enemies slandered his name, and misfortune stripped him of his dignity and peace. Abandoned by friends and mocked by rivals, he wandered the streets, a shadow among shadows, questioning the justice of the gods he had served so faithfully. O oh Marduk, he cried out, why have you forsaken me? Have I not lived by your laws, honored your name above all others? Yet I am cast aside, broken and alone. Where is the justice in the suffering of the innocent? His lamentations echoed through the streets, reaching the ears of the gods. Yet the essence of the poem lies not in the suffering, but in the transformation it brings. Marduk, in his wisdom, is not indifferent to the man's plight, but watches closely, allowing his devotee to be tested, to wade through the darkness of despair to find a deeper faith. It's a divine lesson in perseverance, resilience, trust, and understanding the complex ways of the gods. Marduk later spoke to Shubshi in a dream, a vision of radiance and power. O oh, faithful servant, he said, your suffering has not gone unnoticed. The path of righteousness is fraught with trials, but know this, I am with you, even in the darkest night. Your faith shall be your shield, and your perseverance your sword. Rise, for the dawn of your redemption is at hand. Strengthened by the divine encounter, Shubshi's spirit was reborn. He dedicated himself to understanding the deeper mysteries of life and suffering, sharing his insights with those around him. As his wisdom grew, so too did his health and fortune begin to mend. His enemies were confounded, and his friends returned, drawn by the light of his renewed spirit. In time, Shubshi became a beacon of hope and wisdom in Babylon, a testament to the enduring mercy of Marduk. His story, inscribed in clay and stone, served as a reminder to all that the gods are indeed just, their ways mysterious but guided by love and wisdom. Through the poem of the righteous sufferer, Marduk's role as a judge and savior is emphasized, showcasing his deep connection with humanity. It highlights the belief that suffering can lead to enlightenment, with Marduk as the compassionate shepherd guiding his followers through their darkest trials. The Epic of Era the Epic of Era presents a narrative that underscores the delicate balance of the universe and Marduk's pivotal role in maintaining it. As the story unfolds, the world finds itself in a period of relative peace, all because of Marduk's successful governance and the established order. However, this harmony is not to last. Marduk, sensing an imbalance within himself and the cosmos, decides to withdraw temporarily to the waters of Apsu, to rejuvenate and restore his divine energies. This decision, though made with the welfare of the cosmos in mind, leaves Babylon and the Earth without its vigilant protector. Seizing this opportunity, Era, the god of death, war, and destruction, spurred by his own nature and the persuasive words of his advisor, Ishum, embarks on a mission to purge the Earth. He perceives the momentary peace as stagnation and argues that, without conflict or challenge, Neither gods nor humans can truly appreciate the value of peace or strive for greatness. Era's actions unleash a wave of destruction across the earth, leading to wars, plagues, and untold suffering among mortals. The world, once vibrant and teeming with life under Marduk's watchful eye, now trembles under Era's wrath. Temples lie in ruin, fields are scorched, and cities crumble, their inhabitants crying out for salvation. Marduk's absence is felt acutely as the prosperity and peace he fostered give way to despair and disorder. 
This period of turmoil serves as a stark reminder of Marduk's indispensable role in sustaining order and harmony. The chaos is not a punishment, but a catharsis, a necessary purge to rejuvenate the Earth and its inhabitants. Yet, the balance must be restored, for too much destruction threatens the very existence of creation. In the waters of Apsu, Marduk hears the cries of his people and witnesses the devastation wrought by Era. Realizing the consequences of his absence, he rose, his divine energies restored, ready to confront Era and reclaim his throne. Marduk, understanding that Era's actions, though extreme, stemmed from a desire to invigorate the world, does not seek to destroy Era, but to temper his fury. He reminds Era of the necessity of balance, that destruction without purpose serves only to unravel the world they both are sworn to protect. Marduk's wisdom, coupled with his undeniable power, quells Era's rage, and together, they work to heal the wounds of the world. This act reaffirms Marduk's commitment to his creation, demonstrating his deep understanding of the cycles of life, death, and renewal. The Epic of Era thus showcases Marduk's dual role as a creator and preserver. His temporary withdrawal and subsequent return are a testament to his wisdom, ensuring the world's enduring prosperity through cycles of destruction and rebirth. Marduk emerges as a guardian of harmony, essential to the balance between creation and chaos. Marduk vs. Enmashara The story of Marduk's confrontation with Enmashara, though lesser known than his battle with Tiamat, is a fascinating piece of Mesopotamian mythology that further cements Marduk's role as the protector of the world and the supreme deity of the Babylonian pantheon. This tale, rooted in the complex web of politics and battles, showcased not only Marduk's physical prowess, but also his wisdom and commitment to maintaining order in the universe. In Meshara, an ancient god representing the underworld, the forces of chaos and primordial disorder, sought to challenge the established order. His ambition was to return the universe to its original state of chaos, undoing the creation works of Marduk and the other gods. From the depths of the underworld, Enmashara rallied a host of demons and ancient beings, creatures born from the darkest aspects of the cosmos, to aid him in his quest. As Enmashara's forces began to stir, the universe began to tremble. Unchecked storms raged across the heavens, and the boundaries between the worlds grew thin, allowing demons to roam freely among mortals. Temples were desecrated, sacred rites forgotten, and the prayers of the faithful went unanswered. The gods, aware of the escalating threat, convened in a council, their faces marked by concern and fear. It was clear that Enmishara's rebellion, if left unchecked, would unravel the very world. Marduk, upon hearing of Enmishara's challenge, did not hesitate. He understood that the battle was not merely for supremacy among the gods, but for the survival of the cosmos itself. With the ascent of the Divine Assembly, Marduk armed himself with his mighty weapons, the emblems of his authority and power, and set forth to confront Enmishara. The clash between Marduk and Enmishara was titanic, a battle that echoed through the skies. Marduk, wielding the power of the winds, storms, and lightning, faced the dark forces of Enmashara with unwavering resolve. The battlefield was a spectacle of chaos and order in conflict, with each blow from Marduk's mace dispelling the shadows and each incantation binding the forces of evil. In the end, it was Marduk's wisdom and strength that prevailed. He captured Enmashara, Using his magic to further bind the cosmos together, he turned chaos into an element crucial to the stability of the universe. And Mashara's defeat was not merely the subjugation of a rival, but the reassertion of creation over destruction. With Enmashara defeated, his forces scattered to the darkest corners of the cosmos. Marduk healed the rifts torn in the fabric of the universe, rebuilt the desecrated temples, and reinstated the sacred rituals. The gods, in gratitude, reaffirmed Marduk's status as the king of the Pantheon, and the people of Mesopotamia celebrated his victory with feasts and hymns of praise. The defeat of Enmashara by Marduk is a testament to his role as a guardian. This story, 
though less celebrated than Marduk's battle with Tiamat, emphasizes the ongoing struggle between order and chaos, a theme central to Mesopotamian mythology. Through this tale, Marduk's legacy as the supreme deity, a protector, and a wise ruler is further solidified, his deeds woven into the very fabric of Babylonian culture. The story of Marduk is a key part of Mesopotamian mythology, showing us the triumph of order over chaos and creation over destruction. Through his tough challenges, fights with enemies like Tiamat and Enmashara and kind rule, Marduk is seen as the ultimate protector god. His wisdom and strength brought wealth to Babylon and kept the universe stable. His journey from the Apsu's deep waters to becoming the top god shows not just his power, but also what the people who worshipped him valued. Marduk's tale celebrates the natural order of life, reassuring us that balance will win out. It highlights the need for leadership, wisdom, and bravery. His tale goes beyond the old stories written on clay tablets and speaks to us about life today. It reminds us of the constant fight between what we know and what we don't, and between community and disorder. It encourages us to find balance and peace in our lives. Just as Marduk created a world of justice and wealth from Tiamat, his story encourages us to see our challenges as chances to grow and make things better, continuing to motivate us by standing as a symbol of resilience, protection, and the ongoing search for order amidst chaos. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. What did you think? Did I miss any details? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome to the channel. I hope I earned a like and subscription in your eyes. If not, that's okay. I'll keep making videos until I do earn it. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. I truly appreciate all the views, likes, subscriptions, and kind words and messages. Without you, this channel wouldn't be here today. That's it for now. I hope to see you all in the next one.